Let's learn how to work with random numbers in JavaScript. Go ahead and open up your Visual Studio Code and create a brand new file. And I'm going to go ahead and save my file. And I'm going to give it a name of dicegame.js for JavaScript. And then what we're going to do is we're going to prompt the user for two different names and then each user is going to roll a die which means it'll be a number between 1 and 6 and we'll go ahead and start off between 0 and 6 and then we'll make it 1 and 6 and then we'll determine which users die had a higher number so we know that in order to do that we're going to have to have a variable for user name 1 and a variable for user name 2 and then we're going to have to have uh, a variable to hold the dice value for user 1. So we'll say dice 1 and var dice 2. Let's go ahead and prompt the user to enter in the names. So we'll say username 1 is equal to prompt what is the name of the first player. And then we'll repeat that, and we'll do that for the second player. So that will go and prompt the user what's the name of the first player. They'll type in a name, click OK. We'll assign it to that variable. What's the name of the second player? They'll type a name. We'll save it to that variable. Now we need to generate two random numbers. So how do we do that? In JavaScript, there's some functions of code that have already been written for you. In other words, some pieces of code that somebody said, this would be great to have someday. So they just write it and they put it out there for other people to use. It's similar to when you use Microsoft Excel. If you remember in Excel, you'd say equals average, and then you'd grab a bunch of cells and put it in there, and then it would return a value back. Well, average is a function. In other words, a block of code that somebody already wrote that you can use and call. Why do we like that? Because we don't have to go ahead and write something. Well, here's where the code is written. It's in a place called math. And then after you specify the location of where all the code is, you press the period and then you choose the actual function you want to run. In this case, it's called random. And you put a parenthesis parenthesis. And let's just do this for right now. Let's say alert. And let's just go and display that. Um, we're going to generate a random number, and then we're going to display it. Let's go ahead and save that code, Control-S. We're going to copy that code, Control-A, Control-S. We'll come over here to our browser, Control-Shift-I. We'll paste in our code, and let's run it. What's the name of the first player? Mickey. What's the name of the second player? Donald and then it generates a random number and displays it. Well, that is one random number. 0 0.04949892529. In other words, that's a that's a really small small decimal number. Well, let's run it again. Maybe that was just a mistake and it should be a bigger number. A is the name of the first player and B is the name of the second player. Wow, it's another small number. Well, let's Try it one more time. Maybe we just made a mistake. And we'll still do player A and player B. It looks like every single time when you generate a random number, it's less than 1 and greater than 0. So what does that mean we can do with this? If we take a look at the syntax for the random, it says the math.random returns a random number between 0 and 1. 0 is inclusive, meaning you could get the number 0 back. 1 is exclusive, meaning you will not get 1. So really, this means that the number that comes back is going to be greater than or equal to 0, and the number that we get back is going to be less than 1. So it's going to be some decimal number. So how do we work with that in JavaScript?
let's go ahead and come back to our program and we can do the following let's assign it to a variable and it's going to be dice one is equal to that random number now what we want to do with that random number though is we need to give it a range we need it to be between a value we know that zero is still the lower value so let's do this we'll call the math library again the one that has all the functions and we're going to call the floor function and floor makes it sound like you're down low right so the math floor function actually let's just do this get rid of is going to give us a number between zero and less than one so let's say it gives us zero and point nine 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 whatever if we say math dot floor it says cut off the decimal point so a zero just becomes a zero but a point nine 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 is really zero point all those decimals and floor says cut the decimals off and so that's the number what if the number that came back was ten point whatever if we said floor it says cut the decimal point off of the number so that will help because that gives us a whole number an integer number the problem we have now though is we're still getting a number between zero and less than one so we need this value to increment or to be larger so what we can do is multiply it by another value if I said times 10 that would now return a number between 0 and 9 and actually it could be 9 point whatever but once I say floor it cuts off the value now why would it be that number if I multiply it by 10 let's say that the decimal number we give back is that if I take that number and I multiply it by 10 the largest value it can be is still less than 10 why because the point nine 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 whatever is less than the number one if it was a one and you multiplied it by 10 that would be 10 so since we know it can't be 10 and it will always be less the floor would just cut the decimal off so the very largest that number could be would be 9. What if I said math.floor and I put 11? Then that means the number range would be 0 to 10. What if I said 51? That would be 0 to 50. So if I wanted to do that with dice and just say 0, even though we know 0 is not on a die, and 6, then I would have to multiply the value by a 7. This currently returns a number between 0 and 6. So now we just got to figure out how do we make that work for a z between 1 and 6. If we know that this formula gives us a number between 0 and 6, then maybe what I could do is this. That now gives us a number between 0 and 5. But if I said just add 1 to it, now we have a number between 1 and 6. Because this was 0 to 5. If it was 0, it's 1. If it's 5, then it's 6. So let's do that for both dice. And then let's see who has the higher number. If dice 1 is greater than dice 2, then we'll say alert username 1 wins. Else, if dice 2 is greater than dice 1, alert username two wins else alert tie let's go ahead and save that and copy it 
and come back to our browser and let's go ahead and run that code what's the player the name of the first player we'll say it's Nolan what's the name of the second player we'll say Trevor we'll run it and it says Nolan wins in fact we could even do this let's come back to your code and let's confirm what the dice is Nolan, Nolan wins with notice I put spaces because I don't want words jammed together with and then let's add the dice value dice one and dice two let's save that and copy it come back over to our browser and let's try running it one more time Nolan and Trevor Nolan wins with the three come back to your code so what do we do if there's a tie maybe I don't want to display a tie well you're gonna learn in another video we could put this into a loop and that's for another day so this is how we generate random numbers this says 0 to 5 this allows you to say from 1 to 6 